Hi, this is Yosef Nubhati and we are here at Open Infrastructure Summit in Denver, Colorado. And today we have with us Ryan Vanwick. You are AVP of Network Cloud and Engineering at at and So first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, so first of all, what has been your experience so far at the summit? I think it's been great. Uh, the collaboration sessions, there's a lot of focus on that in the summit and bringing the PTG and the summit back together. It, we're having an overlap with respect to operators and then the developers of the projects themselves being in the same room at the same time, which I think is, is going to be really important to taking OpenStack and the open infrastructure projects themselves forward. Yeah, so one of the projects that uh, it, it hit the 1.0, which is I think very important release, Airship. Uh, tell us, first of all, what is Airship all about? What was the problem that it was created to solve? Sure, sure. So. We partnered with South Korea Telecom and Intel about a year ago to launch the project as a pilot initiative under the OpenStack Foundation. And the motivation for the project was really to take all of the learnings from an operator environment and bring those forward in terms of being able to deliver open infrastructure predictably, securely, and make it easier to operate. Um, we believe that we really believe as a company, AT&T, as a company in open infrastructure, I believe that's really critical to the entire industry. And uh, to make that something that's going to be successful, we need to, one, make it easier to operate. We need to make it uh, lower cost to operate. Um, and we need to make sure that uh, we're checking the boxes that operators care about, security, predictability, um, and, and overall simplicity. And what is the reason of you know working on this open source project instead of you know building an internal proprietary? That, that's that's a great question. So, again, I think it goes back to my my first comment. Uh, you know, AT and T is on this SDN um, roadmap, right? Where we, we want to build a software defined network, and are well on our way to doing that. But for this entire industry to to kind of gel around that, we need to make it easier for that to happen, right? And so, we've we've ourselves struggled for a number of years with various iterations of our cloud infrastructure. And as that infrastructure scaled to, to meet the capacity demands of our SDN, as well as the functionality demands of our SDN, we, 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 we had challenges. And so Airship is really the answer to that. It's a way for us to work with the community to help deliver open infrastructure in a more predictable, seamless, and, and simple way. Um, and we believe by doing that, that our engineers and the engineers in the community can work on higher, higher order challenges. One of the things we like to say internally is our focus is trying to make the boring easy and not relevant anymore. We want our engineers working on the more complex, more challenging, higher order functions um, and less worried about upgrades and deployments and, and patching and that sort of thing. Perfect. Uh, the first release is out. What kind of cadence you have in mind uh, in terms of releases, and uh, what model are you going to follow? Will it be rolling release kind of model? So can you talk about that? Yeah, um, sure. So our goal to, to date, since we launched in May, was to get to a 1.0 release. We sit, drew a line in the sand and said, by Denver, we want to be 1.0. It just so happened to cons coincide with um, some of our internal timelines at AT&T around our 5G build, and so, um, the timing aligned in that we were able to deliver a production, enterprise-ready, production-ready um, set of software um, for Airship. So that's 1.0. Going forward, we have a, a, a whole list uh, of items we want to try to tackle. Um, number one on that list is really about um, simplifying how we deploy and provision the bare metal itself. Um, and to do that, we're embracing Ironic, which is the bare metal project in OpenStack. We're doing that in a standalone fashion, um, and we're going to integrate it uh, with Metal Cube and the Kubernetes cluster API. Um, I think that's going to be the core fo next area of focus for our community. Um, but along that theme of cloud native, you know, given the timing of, of when we built Airship and initiated Airship, there was things in uh, various communities to solve problems that maybe weren't mature enough to, to do that. And so one area was deploying a resilient uh, Kubernetes cluster. And so to, to solve that problem, we created a project called Promenade under Airship. Um, 
since the, since then, the the uh, in the CNCF community, um, there's been a project that's made quite a lot of progress and has essentially become the de facto installer for Kubernetes, um, KubeADM. And so our next order of business this year is going to be to work with the community of Airship to integrate KubeADM and take advantage of all its great capabilities underneath the Airship umbrella. Um, and then to take it a little bit further than that, um, as we, you know, right now we're focused on 5G, but we're going to start pushing further out to the edge. And to do that, we need to take what's a fairly lightweight uh, virtual infrastructure right now and make it even smaller. And, and so we're looking at um, adopting a workflow engine that'll allow us to do that within Airship called Argo. Um, we believe that will give us a stepping stone to have a much more lightweight and potentially even an ephemeral um, Airship installation that would allow us to kind of push all the way to the edge um, and get to very small footprints. So that's going to be kind of another item that we focus on this year. I think our goal would, is to probably get to a 2.0 release um, later this year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we have a, a, a firm timeline on that yet. We're still building um, the project. We're still in pilot phase. There's a number of steps we have to go through as part of working with the OpenStack Foundation to be confirmed, one of which is governance. Um, and just before the summit, we actually published on Garrett our draft government structure for the project. And so we're looking for feedback from the community and other collaborators on how do we you know, best structure the governance of the project. And it'll be important for us to, to manage that project via that governance through the current release cycle and into the next before seeking confirmation from the foundation. So I think that's going to be our focus for the rest of the year is making sure we put in place a robust governance process for the project so that it can uh, be managed well and um, taking care of some of those uh, cloud native to do items that I talked about. So, so when you work on governance, what are the key uh, areas that you like to focus on so that it remains a kind of democratic you know, project uh, where, where, where vendors can collaborate uh, as well as they are able to differentiate without creating fragmentation plus the user community can you know, also use it without worrying about. So, so what is the ideal governance structure that you are looking at based on the feedback that you have received? So I think I think the key thing for us is, yeah, and, and the focus that we're, we have this this week is trying to um, grow the community of collaborators. So you know, right now we have about 17 companies involved, um, but varying degrees of involvement, uh, and we want to grow that. We want to get a, a, a healthy mix of operators, um, of both physical suppliers, and when I say that, companies like Dell that build servers and that sort of thing, because they can bring expertise to the table. Um, even uh, a company like Ericsson that is potentially has use cases for what we're building, as well as um, is an end user of something like what we're building because they would have VNFs maybe that they're deploying on an airship environment. Um, and then um, even companies like Susi and uh, Morantis that are focused on how do we take software like Airship and um, put services around it so that we can make it easier for other companies and other operators to adopt it. Um, and so we've had Susi come to the table. Um, they've, been, they've been working on the project for a while, but kind of more formally come to the table this past week and kind of announced that they're intending to um, incorporate Airship into their product suite. Uh, and then prior to that, Mirantis had similarly come along and said, you know, we've got a keen focus on bare metal and, 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 and containers and infrastructure around that. And, and we, we're intending to adopt Airship as part of our Mirantis Cloud Platform roadmap. So we're trying to make sure that we keep a healthy balance between those three groups um, in working on the platform so that it, it, it uh, you know, embraces those, you know, uh, the, the spirit of the software, which again is, we want to build something that is operator first, um, putting day two operations first is a better way to say it, um, as well as it needs to be able to you know scale and, and, and support the needs of various industries, not just not just telco. Yeah, so you want a very diverse community, not a very monocultural community, yeah, and that, that is healthy for any any open source project. And one so of the things we've worked hard on with Airship is to not have it be opinionated to one particular set of use cases. 
So although we're a telco and obviously SDN is our use case, um, even within our company, we have focused on how do we use Airship to solve different use cases, whether it's using it to run our CI/CD environments, which is obviously agnostic to um, what the end uh, use case is, whether it's SDN or something else. Um, so we're, we're trying to, and we've had a lot of conversations this week with various folks in the Airship sessions, trying to understand their challenges and how can we make this as generic as possible so that, again, we can make it easier for open infrastructure to grow fast. Now, you said something which uh, uh, made me curious that you, you, you come from a different use case in this scenario. You created a project that was solving your problem. Now, you have open sourced it, and you're also building a very diverse community around it, and they might uh, want to use it to solve a different problem. Yep. So, so you're kind of losing control over the project you created, you know, by giving it that's, out. That's, that's a great question. Yeah, so, so, so I think, you know, some, some companies might be afraid of that, right? To say, you know, what, if you, you add too many folks into, the, into the, the team here, what happens? You lose control of where you wanted to go. Uh, we're not concerned about that because, again, at, at the base level, the problems we're trying to solve are, we think, generic to the industry at large. You know, I think most enterprises want to predictably deploy their software. They want to have secure software. Um, they want to have a simple workflow that doesn't require them to have dedicated teams for different types of processes. I think that's a universal need that we're trying to solve. And so from day one, we've tried to stick to those principles and again, not build something that was opinionated towards a particular use case. Airship at the end of it becomes a, it's really just a, a way to manage the life cycle of your containerized software, um, whatever that software may be. And, and uh, our first use case for that is deploying and managing the life cycle of open stack based clouds. Um, but one of the things we try to highlight to folks is OpenStack is one set of software, but we have a lot of other software that we deploy and manage to build our clouds that are not is not OpenStack. Um, and so, you know, you can use this platform for, for any type of software system you want to deploy and manage. Anything that needs its lifecycle managed uh, predictably and securely. Awesome. I think now we have covered some very, some basics and some very in depth also. Do you think anything else we need to cover? Because I think uh, we covered a lot about I think uh, we've, we've covered the gamut here. I would just, maybe one thing to add is, uh, for those folks that may be listening and are interested to go check out the project at airshipit.org. We've, we've put some effort into the 1.0 release to lower the barrier to entry to new developers focused on documentation, building use cases and example manifests. And there's also a project called Airskiff, which is an easy way for new developers to start working on a very small version of Airship, which doesn't necessarily have all the components, but gets them going. To encourage folks to go check that out. Awesome, Ryan. Thank you so much for talking to me today. And since uh, this project is there, I'm hopeful that we'll be seeing you again and uh, to get more updates about the project. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.